Right here we have our racks of DASD, and uh, they're all running RAID 5, so I mean I could re reasonably pull them out and hot swap them while the, while the engine was still running. We run about 65 gig of RAID 5 DASD right now. Systems Network Architecture, or SNA, is the framework in which IBM mainframes communicate. SNA and its structures have helped define the data processing industry as we know it today. The foundation for SNA is comprised of physical units and logical units. Physical units define the actual pieces of hardware that fit into four different type categories. Type 5 physical units are the mainframe computers where your applications run. An example would be an ES9000. Type 4 physical units are communication controllers that run their own operating systems and manage all the communications of the host, be it SDLC traffic, X.25 traffic, or 802.2 LAN traffic. This device, a 3745 for example, runs an operating system called NCP. Type 2 devices are cluster controllers that manage terminals and printers and allow you to consolidate communications lines. They're usually located with your users near their terminals. Logical units, on the other hand, define sessions over physical units and can be used for things like advanced program-to-program -program communications, as well as traditional terminal sessions and file transfers. That's a brief look at SNA. I'm Rich Kaplan, and that's all for now. Let's talk about integrating your SNA-based host into a PC LAN environment to maximize the power of your host computers and desktop PCs. The trick is to use advanced client-server architectures like Windows NT to distribute the communications processing. Each PC uses standard LAN protocols to connect to one or more SNA servers. This allows you to build a private or public TCP IP network as a way to communicate from your PCs to your host systems. The servers then provide shared links to host computers using SNA protocols. SNA server carries the bulk of the communications workload, thus reducing the storage and processing requirements on desktop PCs and allowing the host computers to run SNA protocols, which they've been optimized to do for the last 20 years. This kind of environment allows you to integrate your mainframe or AS400 into a PC-based LAN. It builds the foundation to do host database to PC integration. It allows you to migrate to TCP IP, supports remote dial-in to your hosts, and integrates your desktop applications like Word and Excel into your host-based systems. This leverages and protects the investment in your mainframe and adds clear business value to your PC-based networks. I'm Rich Kaplan, and that's all for now. Did you know that 30% of all new PCs sold last year were laptops? Now, all those laptop users want remote access to your host-based systems. Fortunately, Windows NT Server has integrated remote communications features that allow any user to dial in and get access to Windows NT servers, NetWare servers, Unix servers, and SNA host-based systems. Since SNA Server uses a client-server architecture, the processing of LU and PU information is done on the SNA server. This means a laptop user can dial into Windows NT and then connect to the SNA host just as if they were sitting at their desk. Many SNA terminal networks on your classic host-based terminal installations are multi-drop. That means many terminals share a line that usually has a speed of 9600 baud. But many laptops now have 14.4 and faster modems built right in. This means you'll get excellent performance for your remote laptop SNA users. This, combined with all the other capabilities of Windows NT Server's remote access service, make it a great platform for adding distributed remote communications to your IBM host. All the functionality that's available to desktop SNA users is also available to laptop users. So things like advanced program-to-program -program communications, LU pooling, multi-session capability, 3270 and 5250 support now all work remotely. Windows NT's remote access service supports dial-up modems as well as X.25 and ISDN. All you have to do is install SNA Server and Windows NT Server's remote access service.
I'm Rich Kaplan, and that's all for now. Right here we have our racks of DASD, and uh, they're all running RAID 5, so I mean I could re reasonably pull them out and hot swap them while the, while the engine was still running. We run about 65 gig of RAID 5 DASD right now, and that translates down to about 57 gig of usable storage. We also run about 640 meg of RAM. We also have the new 30, 3490 tape drive, um, which allows us to back up about 2.3 gig of uh, da data on each individual cassette. We want to give the, the users more flexibility, uh, easier for them so they don't have to rely on, on IS departments. When we upgraded to the new version of SNA Server 2.1 and NT3.5, we've got, a, I can say, about 20% improvement in performance. It's, it's very fast now. Our goal that has been laid down to us by our CEO of American Standard is to be off of all mid-range and mainframe computers by the end of 1997. My biggest concern right now is to get getting the job done in the, in the time we have allowed to us.